Okay. Okay, everybody. Now my second talk is about a uh, Libre Online solution. Actually, we are, we are using a uh, derivative of Libre Office Online that's called OX Office Online. That's developed in Taiwan. And the developer entrusted me to share all the experience with you. So this talk, I will talk about the module scheme they developed. And the story will start from 2015. That's the start from Taiwan, when the Taiwan government decided to migrate open document format into the official document format. Uh, so in that year, I have the document, I have the government to tell people how to use that and why we should use that. And in that year, that year, this is the first time I attend the International Liberal Conference. That time is in Denmark, in Denmark. So I used a successful story in Taiwan, that's the start. So at that time, at that time, in the Taiwanese government, the, the department responsible for ODF policy is called the National Development Council, NDC. So in order to promote ODF policy, they asked our local developer called OSSII. They asked them to customize a desktop version. That software is called NDC ODF Application Tools. Actually, this one, this software is customized from we call it OX Office. But actually, OX Office is also customized from the earliest version in 2004. It is customized from openoffice.org. At that time, LibreOffice hasn't born yet. It is customized from openoffice.org. And after 2010, when LibreOffice comes out, they start to customize from LibreOffice. So the NDC ODF application tool, it is customized from OX Office, and actually the ancestor is LibreOffice. And the last year, last year in Taiwanese government, there's a new department called Ministry of Digital Affairs. The, 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 the name is M-O-D-A, Moda. Moda in Taiwanese language, Moda means engine. So this department wish to be the engine to push Taiwan to the digital world. And they merge the, some parts of NDC, so now the ODF policy is responsible. Moda is responsible for the ODF policy in Taiwan. So from NDC ODF application tools, now the newest version becomes the Moda ODF application tools. It is now the newest version is customized from LibreOffice 7.5, and its source is open here. Its source open here. Many added some features asked by our government. You know, one funny feature asked by our government is that if they found that your ODF file, like ODT or ODS or, OD, or ODP, if they found that your ODF file is generated by Microsoft Office, they will show a warning to you. And if you want to save us Microsoft Office, they will show a warning to you. Are you sure you want to save us Microsoft Office format? 
That's a request actually from our government, okay? Okay, besides, this one is for the desktop version. Of course, they also ask for online version. So now we have two parts of the online solution. This, the first one is called the Moda ODF web. This is originally, this is customized from OS Office Online. That is what we are talking about today. We call it OXOL. The source is here. If you can download my slides and uh, you can click the link here, the, com the, the source code is there. Originally, it is customized from Libop of Online. But for some reason, Libop of Online is killed some, somewhat. So the newest version is customized from Corebo Online, but it's going the different way. And then anyway, <coughs> this one is for our government. So some of our government departments start to use, including local government and central government, they start to use this solution. And the source code is here. The second part of this is called ODF Web. Actually, this part is the next call part. You know, online solution, it needs to use together with next call. Right? So this part is customized from next call. So the source is also here. And actually, they add several good features into this part. Okay? So this is online solution for our government. Since our government asks them to develop some features, they will, they will want to bring some new feature to that. The first example is like this. This one is from uh, 2019. That time, uh, you know, in, in our government, there are many, many systems and the many systems will generate a lot of reports, generate a lot of reports. But most of the reports are in Microsoft format. Especially some formats is, is strange format. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen anything like that. They will generate report in XLS extension, but actually it is HTML. I don't know if you have ever seen any file like that. I've seen it. Yes, it, it is generated by system in XLS file extension, but actually it is, it is HTML. So for that, it is even impossible to open by LibreOffice because it is not actual Excel format. Right? But anyway, <coughs> It is also very difficult to ask those systems developer or administrators that because the government want them to generate a report in ODF format, that's the policy. But it's difficult for them to develop a new feature to generate ODF format. So they ask OSSII to develop another solution. Actually, they develop an API server we put a template on the API server with some field in it, and the system part only need to send which field, field what value, key value, key value, key value pair, and send this to the API server, it will generate ODF format document to you. So that they don't need to change the original system, they just need to, when they want to re generate report, they send another call to the API server to generate OBDA file format for them. So that will release a lot of pressure from those old systems. Well, so in 2019, I also asked to present this solution in Boston, in Boston. Okay, that's, this is my talk that, that, that time. Also has video, you can see that in, in there. This is another request from our government. That is, uh, this is called a preview. This preview feature is 
usually called from other service like some uh, some companies or some government units they will use web mail and the mail they were because they were asked to generate ODF five uh, ODF documents ODF spreadsheet and they were attached in the mail so from the web mail it can directly call the online instance they don't need to connect to online instance directly they can just call the online instance and send this document to there and generate a preview image for them even with some watermark this is also a feature asked from including our government and also some from some commercial company it is a very good feature but there are some features requests and they try to implement that in the online solution but you know they are customized from upstream and the upstream is changed frequently so because all the features is connected to the core when the core changed the feature may be broken so when the, when the core changes the version they will need to fix the feature again and again so that's the problem so they are starting to think about if there's any way to solve this problem if there's any way to easily develop a new feature without affecting or being affected by the core so that is the module scheme comes so they just implement the features in module and the core can be unaffected or unaffected by the core actually uh, developing a module in OXO is pretty simple we have a tool then the module maker it can generate an empty module for you and then you just implement your feature there so far the feature can be implemented by C++ or HTML so after implement that you just compile the test and you can also generate Debian package or RPM packages so that you can install in your instance right now I'm doing a live demo I'm directly develop a new module here I don't know if you ever know do, do you know this this website draw.io right this is uh, this is the official website you can draw some graphic here and save a SVG right now I want to embed this one into our online instance as a module okay so the first thing is that I just use the tool I just use the tool to generate an empty module of course you need some arguments but we have document for that we have document for that so I just create we just generate that so I have already generated a git repository it is a git repository okay now this is an empty module so to implement that I, I, can, I only need to do this first this one is the job.io call shared in on github so I just need to copy the front end call into the module
the call is here, and then I just change the, the module call. Because the original, the empty module, the handle request, it is just send an HTTP OK. So I just need to make it call the base class directory. Then start to compile it. OK, compile down. Now I just want to test it. Because I already has an instance run here. So I just register my module to that. Now, I just need to call it. Ta-da. Done. Oh, you. Wait, 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 wait. OK. <laughs> That's all. The module is done. You can draw here. That's it. OK. Of course, this is a simple module example. And it is about only front end. You have to take care of back end too, but back end you will need to implement it in desktop part, not an online part. But that's only this is pretty simple. That's it. So after I show you that, we we can show you uh, we can share that some of the module we already have. The first one is the, called the merge ODF. This is what I just said, the generate the report in ODF format. Because originally it implemented in directly on, online, and then they implement it in module. So now we just need to use this module, and they can generate. Actually, it is more like the mail merge feature in LibreOffice. And it's easier because in mer for the mail merge feature in LibreOffice, you will need to use the database, right? The, the database backend. But for that, you just need a template and the with field in it and the field the data in it. That's all. The second one is called the table to SC. That is asked by our Ministry of Education. Education because they have many tables in HTML format. And using this feature, using this module, they can easily to make the HTML table into a spreadsheet. Okay, that, that's the module they, they, they developed for the Ministry of Education. The first one is preview. I can show a demo for you. This is the back-end administrator of the online solution, OXOL. Actually, as far as I know, in the Corepo online, they also have this, but they are hidden. They are hidden. But anyway, I will show you this preview. You can direct test it here. And first, you, you choose a document. That is, uh, that, that's a marketing document from TDF. And then I can make sure it disable download, disable print, disable copy. And then this is for the watermark. I made it bold and uh, opaque, see, make it louder. And uh, put some text on it, like, This is confidential. Uh, 
Okay? Put some text here, and it will generate a preview like this. Did you see? This is the watermark. This is the watermark, and this is the preview of the document. And actually, I, I said that this feature is actually can be called by other service, others uh, like uh, from webmail or some other uh, file management. They can direct call. They don't need to connect to the to, through the browser, connect to the online instance. They just call the API. Just call the API, and they can send the preview here with the watermark. Okay. And the other. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the API, uh, API expression, uh, explanation and description. Actually, it, it is also described here. The API, so you can just use the API to call the preview if you have this module. Okay, so this is a very useful module. Okay, that's all the demo I will show you. So far, what's the current problem of this module scheme? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, because it's developed in Taiwan and only used in Taiwan and several, several government units. So maybe we need more modules developed and loaded at the same time. So that will require maybe you, if you have some ideas, you, need, you want to add some features uh, for the online solution, you can contact us and we can develop it together. We need also need to more use case so that we know how, what's its limit. So what's the problem we need to solve, right? And maybe dynamic loading module. That is because right now, if I want to load a module, install the module, I need to rerun the instance the online instance. But if you are not an administrator of the online instance, it will be a difficult for you to rerun. So we are thinking about what if we can just direct load the module to the, register the module to the instance without needing to rerun it. That is possible and we are, we are considering how to solve that. For the future, right now the module can only be developed by C++ or HTML. Like the demo I just showed, the draw.io, it is combined HTML and C++, right? But is it possible to develop a module with PHP or Python? It will need an interpreter inside that. Possible, but how to do that? Maybe if you have some idea, you can join us, right? And the mo actually, the most important is that online integration with other sort of service. Actually, that is how the OSSI now do the business. Because there are several big company, commercial companies, contact them. They have their own service. They have their own software some, sometimes. They want to integrate their solution inside the service. So that is what they are going to do now. Actually, they are doing now, what they are doing now. And actually, that is online, online edit is actually uh, not a very big issue. But to integrate with other service, it is what it should go, the way it should go. So that will be the challenge to integrate to many different server service, but it will expand the online solutions road. Okay.
So in the final slide, there are some document here. We are already put some simple document here. Okay? How to de simply develop, how to compile, and this is the source code on GitHub. You can download it, you can, and we have some document. We have some document to how to install that. Here, official document installation. Okay? So, all of you, all of you are highly welcome to join our community. If you like this solution, this is a uh, Libre's online solution. If you like it, you can join us. We have a mailing list. You can simply join it here. Okay? We also have a Telegram group, but of course, if you need that, you can contact me later. Okay, so do you have any question about this? If no question, that's my talk today. Thank you.